Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to Subnautica on the PS4. I've been uh, I've been busy again. <laughs> I've really been kind of tweaking the base a little bit. Uh, so I've changed the upstairs room a little bit, as you can see. I've put the bed now uh, against there. I found this quite difficult to uh, position. Uh, I initially wanted it to come off from here, down this way, uh, and it wouldn't work. And uh, it's to do with these raised sections here. Uh, these sort of black sections here, these raised platforms on the ground. Uh, but I was able to get it on a corner piece just there. So I uh, did that, moved the poster, uh, moved the food around a little bit up here. So I put a lantern tree up here, uh, put the uh, aquarium with the backdrop of a window, uh, just because I think it looks quite cool to see the fish swimming through that and effectively still kind of swimming in the sea. I thought it looked a bit better. And I've also added one of these as well, one of these picture frames and uh, I've taken a photo of the uh, Seamoth Bay, the Prawn Bay and I'm kind of using that as a pretend CCTV sort of internal security kind of thing just so I can uh, keep an eye on the prawn suit uh, so that's pretty much up here, just a little bit of a, a reorganise so uh, up here we've got a lantern tree and a bulbo tree so that I've got uh, a good food source and then a good food and water source uh, and if we go down, uh, nothing's changed in here, apart from the fact that I have now named this locker for nickel, because it's full of nickel. I've <laughs> got so much of the stuff. Uh, going down again, uh, I had a little change in here as well. So I put a potato plant in here, and uh, I'm not sure where I put the melons. Oh, the melons are on the ship, but uh, yeah, I put the potato plant down here, just again, just as a food source in here, and nothing too big or obtrusive. And you can just see a thin blue line there. I've actually changed our power setup quite a bit as well. So if we go down, uh, I wanted to make sure that we had a bountiful supply of water. Uh, so I've added a second water generator, uh, water purifying station there. And I've also uh, repositioned the angle of this a little bit. Put a chair down here as well so I can sit down here and just wait for water uh, to be filtered without my thirst and hunger levels changing uh, and then we've got a lantern tree down here on its own uh, and this is purely for uh, occasional fuel for the bioreactor and you can see that the bioreactor running zero charge pretty much at the moment uh, there is a little bit of matter in there as well as you can see plenty of reginalds uh, are in there uh, they are slowly decomposing but <laughs> they're in there uh, and uh, a bulbo tree sample as well uh, they're all in there, but the power is actually coming from somewhere else. So if we go up and go up again, make our way out. What I've done is I've fitted a thermal generator. Uh, we do have those vents just over here, and I wanted to take advantage of those. So if we swim down a little bit further. I've put in a single platform just there and then mounted a thermal generator on the side and you can see that we're getting temperatures of around 65 degrees now if I'd put it a bit higher up sort of hovering over those I could have got it up to 70 but 65 is enough uh, and then I've put a, a power converter here uh, just or a power transmitter on the edge of the platform uh, the first one does need to be quite close to the power source and then they have a really good range so you can see this one is actually transmitting power through the ground and the second transmitter is all the way over here just there so I, I thought I might need quite a few of these but I've only really needed a couple so one there on the edge of the platform one there and then from there it transmits straight up to the base uh, and just happens to go straight up to the scanner room uh, and the reason I did that was because every time I want to purify water, the bio generator just can't keep up. Uh, it just it doesn't generate enough power, especially when you know you factor in the occasional need to charge in uh, batteries and power cells, and maybe recharge uh, a prawn suit or a sea moth, uh, and then you also factor in wanting to use the uh, fabricator or the modification station, and you need base power for those and. You know, the power just constantly ticks at zero or one with the bioreactor on its own. So adding in the uh, thermal reactor means I have a baseline of power so that I can still do other stuff while the filters are kicking through. Uh, and then while I'm out, when they stop, 
the power level can go all the way back up to 750 and we can kind of kick off another round of water when we get back. So uh, that's the changes to the base. Nothing substantial, just little tweaks uh, to help aid you know, a smooth operation and running so I don't end up sitting around waiting for stuff to happen. But we are pretty much ready to head back. You can see I've uh, uh, grabbed the purple tablet that we had and crafted another one. I've also transferred some supplies over to the Cyclops. We're going to jump into the prawn suit and get docked. We're going back. And we're going to go in the prawn. Just because we might need to uh, craft some... We might need to build, build a base down there. Uh, and uh, so being able to use the drilling arm to gather a load of materials while we're down there uh, would be very useful. And if not, we can always just gather the materials and bring them back. I have also now fitted the jump upgrade for this. And, oh, it's impressive. It really does have so much more thrust, much more power with that, jet, uh, that jump jet upgrade. So you can see here... There it is. There is the uh, the jumpsuit upgrade. I've also fitted uh, the uh, Mark One depth module. I think I might have already had that. I can't remember, uh, but that is definitely fitted. Uh, I can't fit number two yet because we still don't know the recipe for kyanite. We will figure that out. And I have also upgraded uh, the Cyclops a little bit as well. So, uh, no, wrong thing other side <laughs> so many doors uh, if we head over here you can see I've taken out one of the two engine efficiency modules uh, and replaced it with the fire suppression system I think that's gonna be very very useful and I've also upgraded our depth module to a mark 2 as well uh, so we should now get uh, some very good depth with our Cyclops I've also stuck in a fabricator and cleared out some of those lockers. Uh, I've added in a couple of uh, a fish tank up here so that I can uh, uh, take some Reginalds from here, uh, cook them on there, and then we have uh, some salt and some other bits and bobs in here. So I've got a couple of diamonds and some ion cubes. This is so that if we need to craft any more purple tablets, we can do here on the ship. Uh, my spare power cells are in here uh, as well. Uh, and then a provisions locker, plenty of water, and also some cured uh, Reginald. So we'll have plenty of food and water that we can take with us uh, wherever we need to go. Uh, so let's head off. Oh, look, there's my fire suppression system. I've not actually seen that there. Huh. I kind of want to start a fire just to see <laughs> to see, what, see it in action. Uh, we won't. Uh, we are going to head back, though, to the Green River. Uh, Green River, the, the Lost River. So we have pretty much everything we could possibly need, for a while anyway. Uh, I would like to have had maybe a whole reinforcement upgrade for the prawn suit, but I don't really think we need it too much. The prawn suit's actually pretty tough. Uh, as long as we're not getting into a fight with a Leviathan, we should be okay. Now, we've already got good depth on that thing, at least 1,300 metres, I think. I think it's 1,300. Uh, you can see we can go to 1,300 with this now as well, as opposed to, I think, what was it, 900 before? So it's all starting to come together quite nicely. But I do want to go back to that location that we discovered at the end of the last episode and really start figuring out exactly what that is. And I initially thought, if I just pull up the PDA for a second, I did initially think that maybe it was the disease facility. And if I skip through here, go to uh, uh, data downloads, codes and clues, I thought it might be the disease research facility. But as we scanned it, there was uh, where is it was it scanned or was it just something that we found 
Uh, it did say, I can show you here actually, here it says, interior walls in this section are substantially reinforced, indicating the designers were seeking either to keep something out or contain it within. Whatever their intention, it failed. Uh, so that's what we saw, uh, or what our PDA notified us of. And I was looking down here and it says primary containment facility data corrupted. And I'm now wondering if maybe it's not the disease research facility, it's actually the primary containment facility. So I guess the only way we'll know for sure is to actually get in there and have a dig around and see what we can find. But it's going to be one of those two. You know, location-wise, according to the clues that we have, uh, it matches up for the disease facility. Because it's 800 metres deep, it's southwest-ish from the enforcement platform. So that kind of matches up. Uh, but, like I said, it could be, you know, based on what they were saying when we approached it and our PDA kind of kicked in, it could well possibly be that it's actually something different instead could be the detainment facility so yeah a little bit of uh, stuff for us to think about there uh, we need to go the other side of the wreck I think let's uh, get a little bit of height and switch to the camera so we can see what we're doing Yeah, there's our way in, look, just here, I think, somewhere over here. There, there it comes, the trench that finds us our way down. Oh, maybe it's a bit further along than I thought. Where is it? Have I missed it? Or is this it? Ah, this could be it. Yes, there we go. That kind of tallies up. And this time I'm going to try and take the sub closer as well. I'm going to try and get as close as I can. So we're going to actually make our way through past the Leviathan if we can. Uh, it's going to be risky. I do have the shield. It's going to really eat into our power, but of course we have the spare power cells, so we should be okay. Uh, and if worse comes to worst and we do start running out of power completely, we can always park the sub up, uh, build a little pod somewhere, uh, and then uh, build a power cell charger. I suppose I could have brought one with me. Possibly should have done that, really. Never mind. Make our way down. Oops, careful. I caught on something. What are we caught on? really tight getting down here that initial bit is just a little bit fiddly but once we get clear we're all good so making our way to the entrance down here ok let's go back to first person Power levels at 69%. Health has taken a little bit of a knock. I could try equipping for silent running through here, but I'd rather not. Let's turn off sonar. Let's go to low speed. Turn off the lights. Quite a few creatures showing in front of us. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all crab squid. Uh, some of those could be those rays. Proximity warning on the rear. 
Yeah, we're clear of the crab squid. Uh, so that way goes to the Degassi. We're going this way, which will take us... Uh, this is going to be fun, actually, trying to pilot this through here with this lag. Didn't think about that. Uh, this will take us towards the Reaper. And I'm going to stop here in a moment. Because I'm going to get my decoy launcher ready. I've only got one decoy left. Probably should have crafted a couple more before we left. Never mind. Might be able to craft them here. Oh, I've got two. Ah, oh, excellent. Okay. Let's grab both of those. Uh, let's load up the decoy launcher. There we go. So if we do get uh, attacked, we can hopefully try and confuse whatever is attacking us. Let's get some lights on a bit. And we need to kind of veer off to the right when we get through here. I'm not going to take this right up to the facility. I think that would potentially be a little bit reckless. But we will certainly try and get it a bit closer. There is the Leviathan. Hasn't spotted us yet. Doesn't mean he won't. We could go silent running, but, you know... Leviathans, I mean, the Reapers, uh, and I don't know if the ghosts do the same, but the Reapers use echolocation. Their roars are kind of their version of sonar. So, you know, if you hear them, it means they see you. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're searching, and if you can hear them, they can see you. That is the general principle with the Reapers. I'm not sure if it's the same with the ghosts. I would imagine it probably is, though. And so far, we're okay, it hasn't really come after us. We're getting some slight height warnings. But the river prowlers seem to be leaving us alone. And, yeah, the Leviathan hasn't chased us. Which is good. Very pleased with that. So our power level at 65%. No need to go fast through here. We can easily just make our way as carefully as we can through here on uh, slow running. And it looks as though our sub auto repairs itself. I did notice that we took a bit of damage on the way in uh, and the bar did drop a little bit, but it's gone back up. So I was wondering how the uh, Cyclops would be repairable. It looks as though it's auto repair. Uh, that's even better. Need some lights. I think we're getting close to the dragon. In fact, that there, I think, is the dragon. Uh, let's check the cameras. Can I zoom in? No, I can't. <laughs> but I think that's the dragon. It looks a bit dragon-ish. Uh, yes, I can see an arm. So that is the dragon. So from there, I'm not 100% certain which way I need to go. And it seems to have gone very dark. Uh, I guess we carry on through here. Yeah, it looks as though that's the way to go. That's really not helping, actually. Oh, hello. Look at that big tree. What is... I think we've come a different way. I don't remember seeing that last time. Wow. Look at that. That requires a bit more exploration. Let's turn the engine off. Engine powering down. With our jump thrust, uh, thrusters, you know, we can easily make our way back into here from from down there. Uh, and our thirst is going down massively uh, in comparison to our hunger. This is because of the infection. 
Uh, let's see. Have we got any updates on that? No, just still says we're infected. But uh, ever since we've got properly infected, our thirst levels uh, have been going down at a much faster rate than our hunger. So we do need to be wary of that. Let's grab quite a bit of water. Three fish. That should be enough. Uh, we'll stick that in there. Ooh, first aid kit. I do want a first aid kit. Or two. Uh, I did actually stick a radio in here and a first aid kit as well. So really have been kind of just tweaking our setup uh, to uh, put us in a better position. That looks like a very big marble melon. It is. So is that one. Alright, so uh, hunger-wise we are in a bit of an issue, so we'll have to have a, a munch. There we go. So that leaves me with two fish, four waters. I'll take a fifth water just to be on the safe side. Wrong locker. take two more and I'll take one more fish there we go right so I think we're pretty good to go I'm really curious as to what the hell that is that big tree came with a plan and already it's <laughs> kind of gone to pot a little bit look at all these rays down here oh, that's impressive it's a really impressive sight that There is a bit of ground below, that's good. Wait for the dust to clear a little bit so we can see. If there's anything special down here. Got some gel sacks. Uh, some more uranites. Look at this thing. Yeah, I can't help but wonder if this is possibly the source of the infection. I, I seriously doubt it, but let's have a, a look around. Giant cove tree. Let's get uh, back in the prawn so we can have a read of that. A vast tree encountered in a deep cove and the only one of its kind encountered on the planet. The tree is surrounded by rays grazing on its pink outer leaves. Bark, a hardy, fast-growing bark covers the outside of the tree. Minuscule organisms inhabit the notches in the surface. Two, ghost leviathan eggs. Oh. <laughs> the tree's branches are wrapped around a number of maturing eggs belonging to the species designated ghost leviathan. This tree appears to be an ancient nesting ground the eggs were laid when the tree was young, and now the branches protect and grow them as they await the right conditions to hatch. Okay. Uh, so that's a that's a ghost leviathan egg. Look at the size of it. That's huge. It also worries me that now we may well potentially suddenly find ghost leviathans coming after us. I just want to kind of have a little look around. I mean, look at the, look at the size of this. Wow. That's, that's a big tadpole. <laughs> that's a very big tadpole. Look at it, man. That's crazy. That's very pretty. But it is going to distract us from the reason why we came down here in the first place. Did I scan the... No, I didn't scan the ghost race. I thought I had done. Oh, maybe this is just, these are different rays. These are ghost rays. Are they all ghost rays? Yeah, they are. They're all ghost rays by the look of it. 
moments like this where the game just makes you go, wow. I mean, that is so cool. I mean, that is just a monster egg. Look at the size of it. It's huge. That's so impressive. Right. Back in the prawn suit. Uh, we did take a wrong turn. We'll leave the sub where it is. It's not a, a major issue being slightly off course. Loads of deep shrooms down here. If ever we needed some, this would be the place to get them. We've got them at the base, so it's not an issue, but... We need to go back up there. Why is it trying to attach to the ground there? Pressing the wrong button to use my thrust. But you can see we've got plenty of power now, so we can easily make our way up there. So where did we turn wrong then? Is it that way we need to go? I need to look for those lights. Once I find the lights, we'll be good. Again, I think this is the wrong way as well. here. You see the roots of a tree just dangling down, look. is so vast I'm lost already <laughs> I knew where I was going and already I'm lost that's terrible but it does look vaguely familiar I'm going to keep going this way and hope that we come to where we're trying to go I don't remember seeing those uh, spiders though there's lots of them down here. So this is definitely not the way we came last time. I, mean, I just can't get over how big this biome actually is. I never realised it was this big. Another massive tree look. huge tree. I want to try and get out and scan that without getting eaten if I can. Let's make my way up onto one of these branches. Oh, oh, we found the ghost leviathan again. Ah. That's, no, that's a new one. Because we've not been here before, so that's a new ghost leviathan. So there is definitely more than one down here. Okay, good to know, I suppose. Yeah, clear off, go on. He's dead. He's very dead. Oh! him think twice if we can. I was hoping I'd be safe just underneath the tree, but apparently not. Alright. I know we can't scan the tree. I thought we'd be able to. 
I'm pretty sure we've already scanned these guys. Yes, we have. Ghosty's back, looking for us. Let's try and make him think twice. Now I'm kind of unsure which way to go. I've kind of got a little bit turned around in here. He's just pushed us off the edge. Uh, let's not hang around here. Let's head back towards the sub. Oh look, there's the... Um Habitats that way, so it looks as though we're kind of looping around. Where is the sub? He's trying to come back at us again. Uh, another few hits like that, and we are going to be in serious trouble. Where's my sub? Gonna be lower than us, I think. There it is. It's that way. Oh, here it comes again. Big lump of titanium. I'm starting to regret not fitting <laughs> that reinforcement module now. There's a ledge there. Let's get over the ledge. Alright, 36 health. We desperately need to get this fixed. I need to find somewhere safe just to get repaired. Hide behind the tree. <laughs> Oh god, is that another one? Doesn't look like he can get to us. I feel like I'm about to be proved horribly, horribly wrong. He's trying. Ah. Uh, See one over there. Is that the same one? Where's the sub? There. Here he comes. Just trying to line up for an attack. Oh, look at our thirst levels already. Uh, this is not good. He's blocking the way we need to go. Here he comes. No, oh, no, he was able to get a hit off. Alright, we need to get out of here quick. It's one of those probably not so smart look before you leap situations. <laughs> we leaped before we looked. But we kind of needed to just get away. I don't think he's following us. We're heading back towards the submarine. Okay, I think <coughs> we're heading back in the right direction. So the sub's over there, so that's where the tree is. Uh, so it's not that way. <laughs> it's, it's obviously back further this way. Maybe it's over there. What these volcano vents. I'm trying to remember if I saw volcano vents. I remember seeing table coral. What is over here in this dance? Is that just a wall? 
Yeah, it's just a wall. Ah, there's the light source. Okay. So, um, we're not too far. Just got slightly turned around. Time for us to kind of figure out exactly what this building is. Is it alien containment? Is it? Uh, no. Is it? No. Is it? No. Okay. Uh, a disease facility. We need to figure this out. Gotta be wary of the warp. The warpers. We know that they're around here. More fossils out here as well, look. Oh, <laughs> it just said we need to be wary of the warpers, and immediately we get hit by a warper. He's coming for us, I think. Where did my prawn suit go? Ah, it's over there. Yeah, go on, get lost. Interestingly enough, I have uh, experimented with trying to, you know, trap them in a stasis bubble, and they just warp out of it. Which is cheating in my book, but there you go. Uh, right, let's see. Head back over this way. We did find a way in. There it is. That's where we need to be. And we found a force field control in there. Look, the ion tablet's back. Interesting. Well, ion cube, sorry. Right, so where did we find that? Oh, there it is. There's the doorway. Before we go through there, let's have a little explore through the rest of this bit. Another ion cube. Uh, I want my torch. Uh, actually, let me get inside the prawn and sort out my gear. I don't need the habitat builder with me. Uh, so, let's see. I want torch. Uh, put the knife there, then the torch. Uh, no. Repair tool, then the torch, then the scanner. And there we go, that's what we need. So, uh, torch, scanner, repair gun, knife, and status gun. Good. And they're all uh, marked closely to each other where we're going to use them. So, I think I might leave the prawn here, actually. So, we've got a a marker, a way back, as it were. Uh, let's quickly fix up that little bit of damage we took from the second uh, Leviathan attack. Let's have a little swim around down here. See what we can see. Bit of lag. It's quite big down there, so I think, yeah, we'll, we'll actually deal with up here first. What is in here, though? Is that a tank? That is, that's a containment tank. An empty <laughs> containment tank. Yeah, I think this is the primary containment facility. Let's hit this terminal. It's just the, ter the data terminal in here, isn't it? Okay. Specimen research data. Still doesn't say whether it's still not conclusive as to whether this is the disease or containment facility. Let's have a read of our new data. Uh, 
Let's clear that off. Uh, terminal data. Specimen research data. A catalogue of information on the organisms previously contained within the alien facility. A number of entries have been translated. Small herbivore gamma. This entry seems to ref uh, reference the common peeper. Shows no immunity to infection. Death commonly occurs within four days, but symptoms showing remission on exposure to enzyme 42, uh, but symptoms quickly reoccur or recur. Uh, shows advanced learning behaviours. Shows some capacity to transmit enzymes to other specimens. So enzyme 42, that must be that enzyme trail that we've seen coming out of the peepers with the, the vent. So I'm, I'm guessing this is maybe the disease facility then. Uh, Leviathan embryos. Adult specimen too large to study in containment. Egg specimens acquired from nesting site. Aha! I wonder if maybe they actually... <laughs> they got Mama uh, annoyed and she came and... Uh, wreaked her revenge for you know, having her eggs stolen. Uh, egg specimens acquired from nesting site. Embryo showed no signs of immunity. Death commonly occurs within three weeks. Small sample of eggs has been retained for continued high priority research on Leviathan hatching mechanisms. Uh, large carnivore theta. Off-site lab established to study remains. Ah, so that's the off-site lab. Uh, shows some potential for immunity to infection, but physical remains so far proved insufficient for full reconstruction. Unidentified Leviathan. This Leviathan species has been designated as Sea Emperor. That sounds imposing. Uh, bone samples from Emperor species uh, or specimens indicate some potential for Kara immunity. A single specimen captured for study at purpose built containment facility constructed in volcanic region at depth 1.4 kilometers. Ooh. Uh, assessment. While it is unlikely that the Emperor specimen is still contained within the facili facility described, it may be possible to acquire further data there on the alien's attempt to develop a vaccine. 1.4 kilometers deep, so we are going to have to go deep. Okay, let's go explore the rest of this facility then. Uh, I'm now leaning towards this being... We go back to our uh, codes and clues. Uh, we found the off-site. That's what we initially thought might be the um, the, the lab we then concluded was the off-site lab. Uh, I'm not sure now that this is the primary containment facility. I think the primary containment facility might be possibly where that Leviathan is at 1,400 kilometers down. So this must be the disease research facility. Hopefully going through the area a little bit further will confirm that or deny it, you know one way or the other but that's how I'm interpreting things oh, can I get my prawn through oh, I can't I wonder if I could actually move that with a propulsion I don't have one with me I guess we'll just have to swim and explore see what's down here big egg a sea dragon egg We'll have to explore in stages if necessary. Oops. Keep topping up our oxygen supply. Rich cave, uh, rib cage samples. Ray specimens. Oh, more advanced theories. Good. Ah, another terminal. So it's just as well we did bring another. Another tablet with us. Oh, no, we don't need the tablet, we just need to get the data. Let me just finish checking out this area first, then we'll go top up our oxygen. I have a quick read of those new datas. Right, so let's see. Uh, damage reports. Leviathan detected at facility perimeter, closing at high speed. Exterior anchor cable impacted with massive force. Exterior anchor system buckling, facility sinking, collision with sea floor. Breaches detected in containment unit 7, which is the Leviathan eggs. So I was right. <laughs> Mama came back for her babies. Uh, immediate specimen destruction protocol initiated. 
Uh, 314 specimens destroyed, one specimen unaccounted for. Evacuating staff to off-site sanctuaries. Planetary quarantine protocol initiated. Warning, infected individuals may not leave the planet. So, this was all set up, I guess, before the, in, the platform went up. And the platform was a last resort because they, you know, their facility was destroyed. They lost the ability to work on the cure. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe I'm interpreting that bit of information, you know, wrong, but that's what makes sense to me. Oh, look at that. Skull, is that a sea dragon? No, it's not a sea dragon. It can't be. It's a leviathan of some kind. Remains of research specimen. Nothing to scan along here. It almost looks like a giant bleeder, I suppose. It's got arms. Okay, so this room's done. Biological evidence suggests indigenous life forms were brought to this location and subjected to intensive study. Got a fish swimming around in there. Is that a hoop fish? No, it's not. It's spine fish. Is that aggressive? Doesn't seem to be. Here. New creature discovered. Take that back with us. Data pertaining to the bacterium is being downloaded. Aha. Detecting atypical fluctuations in blood. Right, I'm gonna get back protein. top of my O2 levels a and have a read. Scan is strongly advised. Uh, yeah, I think we've overexposed ourselves to the virus. Scan data. Warper parts. The organic organism on display, or the organic parts on display, contain DNA from dozens of different organisms, uh, largely orienting, uh, originating off-world. They are in varying states of augmentation with advanced de uh, technologies. Uh, this production line setup suggests these self-warping constructs were built, maintained, and deployed by the aliens that designed the city. Interesting. Contagion profile. Uh, this terminal uh, contains exclusive, extensive. Oh, I can't read today. Extensive data regarding the bacterial contagion identified as Kara. Uh, discovery first encountered during routine network expansion on outer worlds. Uh, pandemic development. Network error resulted in routine quarantine procedure failure. Contagion was uploaded to and spread through quickly through the core worlds. Confirmed deaths: 143 billion individuals. Ooh bacterial mechanisms attaches to healthy living cells and mutates the basic genetic structure symptoms stage one gradual immune system failure stage two green skin lesions and flu-like symptoms stage three unpredictable alterations to biological structure stage four complete shutdown of executive function emergency steps taken core worlds quarantined bacterial samples distributed to isolated disease research facilities for vaccine treatment or vaccine development Treatment procedure unknown, so they never found a cure. It's up to us, uh, by the sound of it. Uh, we've got some more data down here from stuff we scanned. Uh, ribcage samples. A display case containing an array of ribcages harvested from the indigenous life forms. There is a particular focus in this instance on the vertebrate, uh, vertebrate skeletal structures. 
While some of these skeletons match organisms encountered on the planet so far, most cannot be matched with confidence, suggesting either that there are species out there not yet accounted for, which is going to be the case, or that they have become extinct since these samples were collected, which could also be the case. But there's definitely stuff out there we haven't seen yet, I'm sure of that. Uh, remains of the big weird thing. Uh, skeletal remains of a vast predator housed within an artificial habitat. Uh, the environment constructed to house the specimen suggests it was kept alive in containment for research purposes for months or even years. Organic matter indicates that the habitat once supported extensive plant life, though it has since decayed. When the facility collapsed, this specimen was either left to die or killed on the spot. Evolution. While it shares some skeletal traits with the biter and sand shark, that's what I was thinking of, the biter, uh, in, uh, including its distinctive double eye sockets, this fossilized specimen is significantly larger, <laughs> yeah, no kidding, uh, and features unusual forearms rarely seen in aquatic species. This species has likely gone extinct in the past thousand years, and its evolutionary relatives have evolved almost beyond recognition. Okay, what else have we found? Oh, the spinefish. Uh, small school mentality, prey fish, uh, closely related to the hoopfish. It is edible. Uh, but low calorie count. What else did we find? Start closing down some of these uh, tabs. Uh, fauna, close that down. Indigenous life forms. Still two things that we haven't read yet. Ah, the advanced theories, yes. sea dragon egg. This large egg is held in a hermetically sealed environment and has been chemically sterilized with the, uh, without the means of the facility to house a fully grown sea dragon specimen, it is possible the aliens sought to study the egg laying and incubation process to what end is unclear. Uh, and then the ray species here. Different species of ray indigenous to 4546B each adapted to different environments. Uh, the specimens are 99.99% genetically identical to those encountered on the planet today, suggesting that the rays in particular have undergone little evolutionary mutation in the past millennium. Ghost rays, jelly rays, crimson rays and rabbit rays likely all share a common evolutionary ancestor. The alpha ray would have evolved deep in the ocean trenches, quickly growing in line with available food supplies. It would have most resembled the ghost ray in size and appearance, with translucent skin for camouflage and forward-mounted eyes for hunting, a fast and fearsome stalker of small creatures in the dark. While some rays have stayed within the limits of the cave systems where they first evolved, others are, more, uh, you know, others are relatively more recent adaptations to new environments, likely the results of overpopulation. All of the rays on 4546B have given up predation in favour of herbivores scavenging, herbivorous scavenging and use poisonous flesh to protect themselves interesting well uh, there's still more to explore in here but we are out of time so uh, we're going to call it an episode here we will continue to push on through the facility and find any more useful information we can uh, next time out and then maybe start planning where to go from there so that's it from me thanks for watching I am Jim Bob and I'll be back with some more Subnautica here on the PS4 very soon.